first thing is I've done this at 130 BPM. UKG, you can find it all the way from like 120, really pushing it down, 126, 128 are really nice tempos. So first off, this pattern runs over two bars. Some parts of it loop within the bar, other parts change to the second bar. So at first, we're gonna have a look at the kick drum in bar one here. And what we do with the kick here is we have it land once and then we do a double kick in between the and. So we're leading up into the and and we're landing on the and. So we've got our one, two, three, four, the and right in the middle here, we're just bumping into it like so. Now with the second part of the pattern, we have a double kick, so on the one, on the and, and then we've got that same double kick happening. And over the two bars, this gives us a bit of a push-pull rhythm. Now it's really important to note that this isn't landing on one of our 16ths. You see, we're working in 4-4 and we're working in 16ths, but we're working between the notes with a swing. So this doesn't land on one of our notes. It's swung in to landing on the and, exactly. So if we were to highlight this, for example, we've got our swing over here. And if we put it onto 16ths, you see it will snap directly back into us. And when we're separated out on the 16th, the notes in between are the ones that are gonna move. So if we swing, we can see that we're swinging this particular note here. And what we need to do is find what's gonna be the swing rhythm for us in this instance. So if we loop over just bar one here, it's a little bit too fast. What we do, we dial it back until we find the right kind of area. and somewhere between like a 65 and a 70% swing. We're gonna be right where we're sitting in this kind of vibe and track. Now to really give a push pull, you can give a different value to each of the bars. For example, we could pull this back to say 60. And let the second one be a little faster let's say 70. In the demo project here, however, I've kept everything the same. And they're all sitting around 70. But hopefully you can really hear there the difference that makes. If we pull the swing all the way back, so we're just landing on the grid. It feels super rigid. We push that way back up to 70. We get that fast push-pull kind of feel. Today's video is sponsored by DistroKid. They let me get my music out to all of the major distributors and they do that at a price an independent artist can easily afford. If you're ready to get your music or beats out there and want to release an unlimited amount of music each year, check the link in the description below for a discount off of your first year of unlimited distribution with DistroKid. Now another thing to note here, the sound is pretty important as well. If we go into Quick Sampler, it's just a sound taken from the taken from a break in logic, but I've given it a very, very quick decay, 172 milliseconds basically. Right here. We want it to be a really short kick. Let me just drag this out here, look. Anything around here is actually alright. It's a really quick, punchy sound. Now to counterpoint that, we need a snare, don't we? And we've done the same thing with the snare in that the bar changes. If we take bar one of our snare, we're on the three and the four, like you would expect. However, when we take bar two, we've got a nice snare roll in there. 
And again, we're utilizing that swing. But instead, this time of going into the and, we're going into, instead of this time swinging into the and, we're swinging into the three. So again, we get the push pull. Now, if we take the kick into account as well. We're getting there, right? Now, something with the snare that's really important is velocity in this instance. Velocity is what gives it a lot of feel. That and the reverb. Notice the kick's dry. The snare's got loads of reverb on it. Now, if we have a quick look at the velocity on the snare. When we're not on, the two and the four, really low velocity for that roll. That's what gives the feel to it. Whereas the kicks, consistently loud. To add more feeling and variation to this snare, over time, we have a second snare layer. And that looks like this. We take the two, we can see that they match up with each other. However, we look at the velocity, much lower velocity and always really low velocity on the swinging parts of these. And we've got an extra little bit of rhythm in here, much like we had going into and on the second one, but a really low level percussion. We'll bring the kick in. Now it still feels a little bit sparse at the minute and we use a very simple percussion just to tie it all together. Here is our percussion on the and, on the and, really swung into the four this time, on the and again, just to fill in the gaps of everything else, but to also give a little bit of that push pull with the swing. We're also switching up the percussion sound. We're having that click when it's not on the and. By using this pattern, we get the three rapid hits as we move over the bar, which gives us a little push up or a little feel like the tempo's increased as the bar changes, but it leaves us all the space for the snare roll up here. Or it leaves us all the space up here for like the flammed out snare. So let's bring in the snares. Hopefully it's pretty clear there how all that's working together. There's basically nothing competing ever. But we've got those different off time sounds rolling in together. And then the kick just brings the foundation to all of it. And again, competing wise, kick's not competing, kick's not competing, kick's not competing. Kick's partnered up with a hat once, kick's not competing again. Now once I've created and got that groove that I like, what I like to do is add this one extra element here. Here we are. What is that you ask? Well, I've cut different parts of a break in together over the same pattern that I've created and then just bounced it out as audio to give us the live feeling sound. And then I've given that its own separate space and room. We have a little look at the mix of the sounds here. The break the solo has its own aux room here, and this is what we're getting. We've then got a separate room for the harder drums that I put in, which are like this. So we're getting all that room sound and vibe of the lively kit with the sounds that we've kind of 
guided into the space and built the rhythm with. And that gives us that big wide break vibe right there. And when we let everything go free, so we've got our dry drums like this. We've got our reverb for our snares. We've got our reverb for our lively sounds. Now there is one other element to the drums that I've put in here. And it's a very simple drum roll here. Again, utilizing that same swing just to help bring us into the whole track like this. <laughs> 